Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da habitifillah. The question was asked, Assalamu alaikum. My local masjid in New York is upon the madhab of Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala with a sprinkle of Sufi and Ikhwani influence. They practice a few innovations and do some things that are not in accordance to the sunnah. This includes making congregational du'a after every fard prayer, vicar circles, <coughs> worshiping heavy, and celebrating the 15th night of Sha'ban, delaying Fajr until 25 to 30 minutes before sunrise, reciting very short surahs during Fajr, etc. Besides Minhaj, I feel like I stick out like a sore thumb at times. They're culturally as, as well, since they are all from South southern Asia while I am not. There are also a few times when I will lead the prayer alone because nobody shows up. In any case, the brothers there are friendly for the most part and I have not seen any innovations that would amount to shirk. Perhaps Allah will bless me to have a positive influence there. Then there is a Salafi masjid that is a bit of a distance, approximately 15 to 20 minutes drive from me. I sense though that they have some hezbiyah with them and are not on and are on that refuting culture, though I could be wrong. What is your advice? Which masjid should I frequent? My wife and I are worried too about raising a family here and protecting my children from deviations. We're planning to make hijrah, but are here for the foreseeable future, inshallah. Please advise. First and foremost, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al nafi rizqin tayyib wa amal al And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all of our many sins. And may Allah bless us all with ikhlas, with the bad Allah sunnati, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. And as far as the masjid, one thing I observed in your question, you said worshipping heavy. I think I understand what you mean, but of course we all should be worshipping heavy. You know, we should all be uh, in our ibadah you know, making uh, nawafil, making extra prayers and fasting and and doing extra acts of ibadah to come closer to Allah and make up for the shortcomings in our wajibat. So all of us need to have uh, heavy worship. But however you mention some things uh, that are not in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And you mentioned that you feel culturally isolated and that in general the brothers are friendly again those are your Muslim brothers and if you have knowledge and you have the ability to influence them in a positive way then bi'idnillah do so and if not if you don't have uh, Islamic knowledge or some Islamic knowledge and the tools to be able to protect yourself from their doubts, then it's better to be out of uh, a situation like that. And you also have to keep in mind, obviously, the fact that you live 15 to 20 minutes from a so-called Salafi masjid. And with that being the case, uh, there's probably additional hardship on you for praying some of the prayers, especially with the lifestyle in the West. And in fact, around the world, it become, can become very difficult, but especially in the West, where masajid are few in number compared to being a Muslim land, and so on and so forth. There are many other obstacles as far as work schedules and so on and so forth. So, my advice, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, is to pray in the place which is easiest for you, in which there is no harm to your religion, of course. And being with your Muslim brothers, wherever they are from, uh, and if you have the tools to protect yourself from bid'ah and you understand that some of the practices that they're doing are not in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and you can advise at least some people who will listen to you, then do so. If not, again, if it becomes a greater harm for you and you see that it affects your religion, affects your iman and so on and so forth, then you should remove yourself from that environment and strive to pray in a place that is on the sunnah or closing, closer to being on the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And as far as raising a family, there is no doubt that there are additional challenges 
and difficulties being in a non-Muslim country. And many of us, unfortunately, lose our children in uh, those environments, especially in the West. We lose it to the many um, forms of shahwat or shubahat. The shahwat meaning the desires because things are open there. The men can marry men, women can marry women. Uh, all kind of desires, people experiment with everything, experiment with drugs, experiment with uh, sexual relations and, and everything that we can imagine and more. And with it being an open society, people are challenged in many ways. And then there's also Shubahat is open to, that means any kind of ideology and afkar or way of thinking and deviancy uh, and disbelief also challenges our children and ourselves. So it is very important that when we are in those environments to be vigilant and to strive your best to be strong with your family and devote time with your family and teaching your children what are right and wrong and how to distinguish between that which is right and wrong and also hopefully to establish a relationship because when teenagers when they become teenagers, a lot of times we lose them. This is when they begin to rebel as a natural inclination as their brains are still developing and they begin to experiment and they begin to deviate uh, often. So it is very important to, to try your best to keep a tie with your children and to maintain uh, understanding and try to empathize with what they're going through. And these are not easy things, and this is why this is very general advice, but uh, we have to strive our best. And if this is khair and you can do, and if you're able to make hijrah and you have this intention, this is khair to make uh, preparations to do so. And at the same time, while you're there, to also protect yourself and your family by seeking knowledge and showing your family the beauty of knowing more about their religion, making that something beloved to them. Oh Allah, we ask uh, for your love and we ask to uh, for you to place in us that uh, that which you love, you know, a love for that which you love and to, and to love those whom you love and all the deeds uh, that you love. And so supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often and striving your best to practice uh, are some things that are going to help you. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.